So many alumni networks are by school and increasingly in a world that's not siloed, that we all need to make connections. I think business can be that linchpin that connects everybody. I'm a lifelong member of the Alumni Association. If you are not one, you should be, because we are all Jayhawks, ultimately. KU is the home of my American dream, my family's American dream. There's something special about being back here. Please join me in giving a huge Jayhawk welcome to Forrest Holman, please. You moved to Texas at the time and started your career, in fact, spent your career in the oil and uh, gas industry. Uh, people here may not know, there's so much, I could go on and on, but really interested in um, EOG and the uh, connection with Enron and how you navigated that. What was it like to have an inside of you to what was going on? Well, uh, that was rather interesting. Uh... I left Exxon uh, after about 21 years, a uh, tremendous career there, everything was great, but I just decided I didn't want to do the same thing all my life. Luckily, I got a great offer to go to Dallas to work with an oil and gas company called Texas Oil and Gas, which was just going like that. It was like catching a speeding train kind of. Uh, but uh, we ended up growing that company substantially, and then we merged it with U.S. Steel, of all things. I, uh, I ended up leaving after about a year on the USX board and going with Enron Oil and Gas. And uh, that was a rather exciting time. Uh, first, uh, very first part of it was, uh, I was, uh, the, the goal was to take their oil and gas company public. They were a big electric, uh, gas, uh, everything else kind of company. Uh, and the oil and gas was kind of a, you know, byproduct of it, I guess. Uh, and we finally got it public. We built a very successful, low-cost, low low-debt company right in the middle of Enron. Uh, we didn't have any of the policies they had. They had some really bad ones. Uh, and then we got the, uh, the company out of Enron two years before they went into to bankruptcy. Uh, we were able to uh, uh, structure a deal where we basically got most of their stock in. And uh, the cry around it, EOG, well, Enron Oil and Gas, became EOG Resources. Yeah. Uh, when we got out, that was the name change. Uh, it was kind of interesting. When I came there, it was valued at about $600 million value. When I left, it was about $4 billion. I felt pretty good about that. I put another guy in charge, and after about the same time I was there, he had it up to $60 billion. No mergers, no acquisitions, five yards and a cloud of dust. Uh, that was pretty, pretty uh, amazing. But uh, the neat part of it was I left the very day we got it out of Enron. Uh, the, uh, the, the structure was, uh, changed. So uh, anyway, when I left, uh, I left. I don't believe in uh, hanging around and staying on the board. And, you know, they're tired of you anyway by that time. So. Uh, I just decided to go start doing what I wanted to do, and uh, that, that the rest of the story. Mm, amazing. Um, was it timing? Like, what was it? Good luck? How did you get out at that time? I, I, I can't even fathom what it would have been like. You said it sometimes that it was like a rat's nest, and there was this little island that you know was immune from that. Well, we were we we weren't going to get caught up in all that. We were a public company already, so. They were the largest, they owned 52% of the shares. They were the largest holder. But we had minority shareholders and they tried to stiff the minority shareholders for a while and kind of, we had a few confrontations and uh, all that, but we finally were able to structure an arrangement where we were able to get them out. We borrowed $600 million, uh, gave that to them, uh, gave them some properties in India uh, and China and uh, we kept everything else and uh, just an unbelievable company now, one of the best mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. For those of the younger alumni here, many of you have heard me talk about the nobility of business, this is what I mean. Many places they think if you're in business, you're hiding your horn somewhere. And that's not true. The greatest people I know, such as the Hoaglands right here, really believe in making a difference and paying it forward, giving it back to, uh, to someone else. So I think, I think that's a, a great lesson for all of us. Let me, let me give one to one. Quiz here, just to see. Go for it. 
Uh, I said EOG was really good and, you know, it's been very nice, but uh, we started the foundation in 1989 and we put a total of uh, $31 million in it. We've given away 41. So there's nothing left, right? No, it's about $65 million. So uh, we've been able to do all that, to do all the things we wanted to do, and uh, the girls, as I said, have really been heavily involved in it. There are five people on the board, the three daughters, Sally and I. So uh, it's just been an awesome thing for us, and uh, that's a pretty good investment kind of return to uh, try to shoot for if you can get it. When I first met Forrest, gosh, soon after I started as dean, it was about three years ago, I remember we talked about it. It's something I feel very strongly about, how important it is for young people to have, a friend of mine now calls it figure sense or number sense, or not to have phobia about dealing with math. So tell me about that, the Reasoning Mind, I know. Reasoning Mind is the name of it, and uh, it's a 501c3, so that's part of the, the not-for-profit, but you know, we just got a horrible situation. We're 36 in the world now and dropping in math education, and we can't get any better. Uh, there are some real reasons why we can't get better, no matter what we do, uh, uh, the way we're doing it. So we had a group of us that got together and said, how can we get competitive in the world of math education? So, well, obviously the first thing you need is the world-class curriculum. Now, in Texas, we have 1,030 school districts, and they each set their own curriculum, and they each dumb them down so the kids will pass. Uh, that's not the world's strongest curriculum. Uh, we've used the Russian curriculum, which is uh, uh, not how you do a math problem in Russia. It's a 90-year-old proven method of how the mind retains. Yeah. You do not let the child go ahead until they learn. And you just think of a standard classroom. The teacher comes in with that curriculum. Uh, she has a schedule. Uh, she's got to move forward on that. She doesn't know whether the kids are getting it or not, but she's going to go ahead on the schedule. schedule and then half the kids in the class say, I'm no good at math. Well, the reason is they just don't have that base built. The program is animated, fun, web-based. Uh, the kids think it's a game. They just love it. One of the real benefits we get is uh, if you look at a standard classroom, there's a Columbia University study out, about the best you get is 50 to 70 percent time on task. Hmm. Wayne was the worst. We got pictures of him in the third grade looking out the window uh, quite a bit. But, and then by the latter half of the math period, they're really down. I mean, they're just losing interest. So, what do their school districts do? Well, they all hire math coaches, math remediation, assistant principals, psychologists, and they just throw people and money at it, and they never improve because they don't have that base built with each of the students. Now, the next thing is tremendous artificial intelligence built into the program. Uh, it remembers every keystroke each student makes. It will not let the student go ahead until they learn. And so therefore what you're doing is you're teaching each child individually at the best pace they can go. And that is tremendous, particularly when the kids really like what they're doing. The teachers, very different, very important, on her screen is every student. And where they are in the program, where the program thinks they ought to be or could be, and then the accuracy they're getting, and the teacher with absolute up-to-the-minute data knows exactly what's happening in her classroom. If one of them's having a problem, she can click on that name. Here comes all the data. Here comes the artificial intelligence. Tells her to take them to a table. Here are the last three problems they missed. Here's why. Here's how you have to teach them. So it's just a completely different way of teaching uh, that you have. We're now in nine states, 100,000 students. It's approved by the state of Texas. We're sponsored. Uh, actually by uh, TEA in the state of Texas. We're approved by the state of California. Uh, the biggest user of all is Dallas Independent School District. Mm. Every second, third, and almost every fourth grader is on it with tremendous results. Uh, they start out, started out fighting it. They're now really liking it. 
So we are now in a push to take it statewide uh, in Texas, which would change it straight. And the politicians know it. They're much ahead of the educators uh, who uh, are the superintendents and the principals in the schools. But anyway, it's awesome. It's great. It's awesome. That's, that's great. Dean, what John Olson from Dallas, what's the outlook for the KU basketball team this coming season? <laughs> Outstanding. You know, I did make a sacrifice to be here tonight. Bill Self is hosting his uh, ladies night out with Bill Self tonight. So we were at, yeah, I'm telling you. you. You know, rock chalk, you'll do great. I don't know how we, actually may I take this as a serious question in one sense, because once we have, I've told you that business can really benefit by bringing in the best ideas from high performing organizations. So with this room of Jayhawks, I can tell you, Coach and I have been talking quite a bit we want to launch the Bill Self Leadership Academy. When, you know, like Coach K has one, it's, it's really about leadership. Once we're in our new digs, it'll be much easier to do around basketball camp or, and so on. Why not have an opportunity for all of us to hear, how do you recruit year after year? How do you motivate? How do you get these results from these young people? I'd love to know, right? So that's something we are thinking about. Will you join me in thanking Forrest Hoagland again for giving us